will be seven minutes later. It's tasty. That's not gonna lie, because you're a thick villa. Good evening, the one and only EP <laughs> is in the building. What's going on? Mornings are the best in an RV. As you're coming on, please share this broadcast. Share this for, with your friends. Share this with your followers. And I will do the same. Good evening, good evening, good evening. <laughs> I'm here for moral support. Like my let me get the announcements out of the way. Um, as we are preparing. So we have several things coming up for contagious church, contagious global, fearless women. Listen, the next few months is going to be jam-packed, so I need you to make note of these dates, okay? You with me? You following? You're tracking? You're, pick, you're picking up what we're putting down. <laughs> so, April 21st to the 23rd, we will have Eagles and Architect. I'm an e I lost my earring. Look at I'm an Eagle. I'm an Architect, right? Are you an Eagle? Are you a Builder? Are you an apostle are you a prophet are you apostolic in nature are you a leader are you a pastor are you a server all these things do you need training do you need activation do you need community right i need you to sign up at www.eaglesandarchitects.com and register today listen if you are a member of contagious church charlotte contagious church tampa you are part of Contagious Connections or any affiliate. If you're an e-member, <laughs> you need to register. It's I don't know why the members are the slowest people to register first, right? Get on it. Come on, people. Listen, we got to get on it. We got to register. Don't let the visitors register before you, okay? Let's register. Let's support our Contagious Global, right? corporation, organization, church, whatever you want to call it, let's support. There's going to be some great meat. We are going to be one of the speakers. We are going to be talking about building the family, marriages, and children. I'm excited. Aren't you excited? Absolutely. <laughs> you believe Can you that? Tell? I can't tell. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Eagles and Architect in April. Then, Wrapping it around the corner in May, we have our wildfire night. But you can't hear me. What? I don't know. But wait. 
Oh, it's okay. Can you do that? The people are waiting. Listen, y'all, listen. I'm, <laughs> listen, this, this is, is real, real life. life. Huh? Okay. See, we share a brain. Oh, See, she already goodness. knew what I was going to say. Excuse us. It's, All right. Um, so we have a little worshiper over there. An amazing, amazing uh, uh, man of God. You have to put it in your speech, I, your mic, because, because you won't be able to hear it. No, on the on the people. The people won't be able to hear it. Y'all listen to this. An amazing. I'm a giant fan, but my vision like the eagles. I ain't hoping to take it. I see the sun on the head. Coming down, giving the revelation of some junk. The beloved of Becky. Even the show. She is prophetic. Listen, uh, amazing, amazing leader. One of the leaders from uh, Contagious Church, Charlotte, wrote that for Eagles and Architect. Are you an eagle or are you an architect? Brother got I'm, bars. Listen, I'm just an apostolic prophet, so I'm an eagle and I'm an architect. But when he said I'm Brother, building and I'm bringing the eagles with me, listen, you can't build without the eagles. You cannot do it. You know, eagles are known for their keen sight, their eyesight. They can see from miles. <laughs> you can, you can, you know, eagles can see from miles and miles. Um, and so, you know, when you think about building, uh, although that's not what we're going to be talking about tonight, <laughs> right. but I did, I definitely want to dip down into that quickly. And so my beautiful wife can finish the announcements. Extremely beautiful. <laughs> Next level beautiful. Wine. Like a new wine. Like an aged wine, rather. All right. Um, you know, and then, you know, of course, uh, architects are known for structure building. Um, you know, so you got to have blueprints and then you got to have those that will put their hands to the plow. So with that being said, go register today. <laughs> okay. www.eaglesandarchitect.com. Go and register. If you're a leader, if you're building, if you have vision, uh, allow us to help you. Uh, if you're the leader of your house, if you're the priest of your household, right. come on. We want you there. Yes, be there or be square. Yeah, there you go. So, Eagles and Architects in April. And Early then around morning. Saturday, we're going to go in order. It's, it's levels to this. Saturday. Oh, come on, in Tampa. Yes, yeah, Saturday oh, okay. is um, the Fearless Luncheon. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. We have a couple of days, so you still have time to go register. Fearless, fierce, and favor. Yes, go and register. At www.fearlesswomenglobal.org. Fearless we, we have a lot. Yeah, we have a listen, lot of websites. Right. <laughs> yeah, listen, it's, it's coming up Saturday. We want you to go and register and be a part of that fearless luncheon. In Tampa. In Tampa. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, we would love to see you there. Okay. So. Okay. It's in the Oh. Did we, did we lose you people? I can't see. Oh, there we go. I lost you there for a minute. So the Fearless Luncheon in Tampa is, is Saturday. You still have time to register. Eagles and Architect in April, 21st through the 23rd. And then you round the corner in Charlotte. We have our Wildfire Night, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. 
I can't remember, 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m., I think, one or the other. We'll have a flyer for you. But our feature, we can't even call him a psalmist. He's not a psalmist. He's just a lyricist. What is the one they call EP, our very own executive pastor? EP will will be a part of the worship experience. Look, I'm so excited about Wildfire Night this time. The intercessors are off the chain. They're ready to go and war in the spirit with you. The worship is going to be banana. So don't come cute. Come come ready to just, just give it all over to the Lord, right? And then, and June. then in June, we will have the Fearless Lunch in CLT. Fearless Lunch in Charlotte will be here June 11th, right? Keep that date blocked off for the luncheon. Lock More details to come. Okay, let's get it. We were already late, so we got to give the people some food today. Lock, some Bible study. Lock it in. <laughs> uh, listen, be there, be square. Be okay. fearless. Mm -hmm. Be bold. No, it's different be this fearless. year. I'm going to get mama going to get you. It's fearless, fierce, and favored. Fearless, fierce, and favored. All of those things. All of those things. And Prophet's Counter is putting all of the information in the comment section. Okay, let's get to being unshakable. Appreciate Listen, you. Listen, this comment series has shaken the ones who are not ready to be shaken, <laughs> have shaken loose some things they need to be shaken from, and the ones who are rooted, planted, unmoved in God. Always abounding Listen, in the work the of the Lord. Word of God says, that we will be unmovable. He told us that in Psalms. Nothing can move us. And I'm just excited. So Apostle Reggie's going to take over. And I am going to sit here for moral support. And she can't even say it right, y'all. Right. It just sounds, you know, it's just, it just sounds so much good. better when I say it right. Uh, anywho. <laughs> so we've been ministering from this thought. Uh, all month long talking about unshakable. We moved from in January. We talked about how our how important it is to say yes to God, and then in February we moved, transitioned from after you say yes to God, then you know God gives us His best, the best, mm -hmm. the best blessings, the best the best favor, all right? Um, the best results, the best victory. I remember. That's not what uh, that wasn't my. <laughs> That wasn't the my best story. victories, that and then perfect. so after we've gotten received you get your God's best, best after being obedient. Yes, that's after right. after we've received God's best, and then we that's when we move into that realm. We move into that dimension called unshakable. Mm -hmm. Right, you cannot operate in the realm of being unshakable without having God's best. Mm -hmm. Right, He gives you the best anointing. He gives you your best oil. He gives you the best promotion. He gives you the come on. He gives you the best of all that he has to offer, right? And so sometimes, sometimes we don't always honor the things that God gives us. And so I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but you got to understand and know why or what things or what demonic entities are, are fighting against you being unshakable. Mm -hmm. And if you begin to, but, but, but here's the revelation, but what God really began to start speaking to my heart was that even the storms of the enemy, even the challenges and even the things that the enemy does, concerning us it it is uh it's all going to work together for our good because it strengthens us to become unshakable you know how will you know that you're unshakable if the devil never tempted you how would you know if you're unshakable uh if trials and storms never came your way how would you know if you're unshakable uh, against our loss and, and and how 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 can god get the glory out of your life if you're not managing your storms well and so I want to use as a reference, um, Luke 4, I want to recap my sermon, what I talked about on, on Sunday, Luke 4, and I'm going to read a little bit, and I want you all to interact with me again um, tonight. I don't want to do all the talking. Hello, Miss Monica Calhoun. Good to see you. God bless you. As you're coming on, please share this. Share, 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 sharing is caring. All right. Luke 4, and I'm going to be reading out of the New International Version. It talks about Jesus being full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing 
during those days and at the end of them he was hungry he was hungry so here uh luke 4 opens up and talks about how what's the key uh uh i was talking about sunday what's the key or what makes us unshakable mm -hmm. let's see if my wife is paying attention well of course I was i'm putting attention. Her, I'm her on the spot having now. the holy spirit absolutely being full of wisdom and being full of the see she was gonna get get i don't have to get her y'all <laughs> uh, having uh, having wisdom and being full of the holy spirit is what makes god's people unshakable i think a lot of times we forget that we mm -hmm. i always say that warfare comes in the indecision and what i mean by that is that you look totally leave out the holy spirit and you completely operate in your flesh and so there's warfare there's indecision there's there's no peace there's confusion there's um just all instability and so if we're going to be unshakable, if we're going to be unmovable, we have to have the Holy Spirit. We have to operate it in it. I know there's tons of denominations that don't even teach about Holy Spirit, don't even teach about the triune God, right? And so if Jesus himself, the, the word in flesh, God, right, if he operated in the Holy Spirit, why do we feel like as believers that we don't need him? Who with me? Let me say, because I felt that so strongly. My God, I know people. We know people. You may know people who will understand the Bible, the scholar, the educational, academic, the historian, Jesus, but they lack and they fail to understand him in spirit. And so if you only know him through the word, but not through the spirit, you have missed him completely. Because if Jesus is our example and he came as the only begotten son, he's word in the flesh. He is God in the earth, right? And he has left us our his Holy Spirit when he went back, right? But even in the earth, he operated in his own spirit. And so how can we even say that we know God, that we believe God, that we know Jesus, that we trust in him, that he is our Lord, that he is our savior, but completely leave him out of everything? Then, oh, that word just came up. You're all, it's hypocritical to say that you are a believer of Jesus Christ, but not operate in his spirit. How can you be unmovable? How can you be unshakable? How can you have revelation, wisdom, knowledge, understanding? How can you have any of these things without the Holy Spirit? Right. You know, it's two two points as as you We have a new puppy. And this is his first time live. And so you you're uh, hearing him play. Uh uh, we're live and it and obviously legend is live as well. He's live. <laughs> And in full live and then indirect, right? Um, and so, you know, um, as my wife was 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 talking, um, I immediately thought about, you know, John the Baptist. You know how uh, John the Baptist said that there was one crying mm -hmm. in the in the wilderness, mm -hmm. saying, "Prepare ye the way for the pre prepare ye the way of the Lord," mm -hmm. right? And he says that you know he says he he was he was teaching and ministering um, on the uh, uh, he was ministering from the thought process of a uh, water baptism, mm -hmm. right? He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the washing away of sins, the cleansing and mm -hmm. all of those things. But I immediately thought about how when Jesus and, and John the Baptist interacted, that Jesus himself submitted himself unto mm -hmm. being baptized. Right. And he says, listen, I'm not even worthy to tie your shoelaces. Mm -hmm. He says, you want me to baptize you? He says, listen, I need you to baptize me. He says, but John John the Baptist said that he was one crying in the wilderness. He said he was talking of uh, ministering from repentance. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he says, there is one that is coming greater than me. Right. One that will baptize. He says, I came, I come baptizing you with water, but there's going to come one greater than me that is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mm -hmm. And he was making reverence to Jesus. Um, I think it's important you bring up a good point how Jesus himself uh, uh, submitted himself unto water baptism. Right. Mm -hmm. In essence, he was he was literally uh, uh, showing us the example of what the symbol, the symbolism of water baptism and what it rep represents his death, his burial and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Right. 
the scriptures are they that testify of him. And so you got to understand that after Jesus submitted himself to water baptism uh, by, by John the Baptist, the Bible says, lo, and behold, there, uh, there was a voice from heaven. There was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the Bible says that a dove descended from from heavens. Uh, 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 the dove descended and we know that the dove is symbolic and represents the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus Christ himself was endued with power from on high with the Holy Spirit, that's what made him unshakable. Mm -hmm. It will be safe to say that that was that's that's what makes us unshakable. Absolutely. Like we cannot we the only tangible thing that we have in the earth is his spirit. Right. And so he's not here walking with us, you know, t uh, manifested in the flesh, walking with us. And so the only way that we stay connected to the unmovable, unshakable God is through the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. So Jesus, full, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. You want to talk about that? Yes. So great. I had great revelation when I was reading this. How many times have we read this? We've read this a thousand times, right? And so when I was reading it, I was like, aha. And um, mm -hmm. Apostle Reggie was like, no, that's just that translation. I said, bro, I got you three revel uh, three translations, right? And so the, the, the understanding is that Jesus was tempted every day by the enemy. It doesn't give us a, dis a, dis a de let me get it out, a depiction of every day that he was tempted. It talks about just a few times, right? But it clearly states that while he was there, he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. It says into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. That's the New International Version. But even the English Standard Version, the King James Version, all of the versions say that. All of the translations say that that he was um, he was tempted every day. And so a lot of times as believers, even as prophets and intercessors, a lot of us fasting is a lifestyle. And we had to realize this a couple of years ago. We was like, why are our children acting crazy and we're on a fast? Well, hello, if Jesus was being uh, tempted every day by the enemy, if he was being aggravated and irritated by the enemy every day, why do we think that when we're on a fast that we will not, right? So we have to be very cognizant and aware. If Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by the enemy, that means when we are in our most sensitive state, when we are have pushed our plates to the side when we have said we're just going to with, withhold from this and fast from that, that the enemy will try to come at you in your most weakest state in your flesh, but you are the strongest in your spirit. That's where you're unshakable. So if you're fasting for five days, seven days, and you're like, what, what, what am I going through? What is going on? Well, baby, that's because that flesh is being is being put under subjection. It's being crucified, right? It's being tempted. It's being aggravated. It's being inter irritated. But that spirit man is increasing. That spirit man is getting rooted. That spirit man is becoming unshakable. And that's why the scripture talks about and teaches us that the flesh is, uh, uh, the uh, spirit is willing, but, but the, the flesh, flesh is, is weak. weak. You know, what is the purpose of fasting? I, I, I believe it's, it's important to understand that you are not even equipped to fight the devil if your spirit man is not built up. Mm -hmm. You know, we are to build up our most holy, holy faith. faith, according to Jews. Speaking in tongues, right? praying, in, praying tongues. in the spirit. Mm -hmm. For a man know not what he should pray mm -hmm. as he ought. But the spirit maketh intercession, mm -hmm. right? If any man speak in an unknown tongue, he speaketh not unto man, but directly unto God. In his spirit, how be it, his spirit utters mysteries. So how can we serve a God and not hey. even honor the spirit? Oh, shit, te may I. The spirit, the Holy Spirit. Let, let me make that clear. This is the capital S. The Holy Spirit. That's it. That's all. That's all. I got. Oh, Listen, I thought she was about to go on the road. Listen, I'm, I'm just saying. I, it, it bothers me that we take out some of the most important things about what what makes him God. Like, 
I say that's all I got, right? <laughs> out there, a few other taglines. If you take those things away, it's not Shanika. If I'm not giving you the word of God, giving you counsel, giving you prophetic word, listen, I give you the straight up unadulterated truth in love, right? And you will say, nah, that wasn't Shanika if she didn't give it to you, right? So if we're taking characteristics out of him, then are we really operating in him? I want us to operate in him so that we can be unshakable. You are only unshakable in your spirit, man. That's it. Because this flesh is weak. This flesh is... The flesh is weak. Oh, God. The flesh again tempted. Listen, it is the, the spirit... The flesh that cuts you out, listen, slap you. It is the spirit of God is, that is unmovable. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit of God that is unwavering. It is the spirit of God that is always abounding in the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The spirit will never operate contrary to the Godhead, right. right? There are three that bear reckon in heaven, mm -hmm. and these three agree in one, is what I believe that's John, First John, somewhere over there talks mm -hmm. about. Uh, and you got to know and understand that when, when God... Uh, we are only, hear me, you are, we are only unshakable in our spirit, man. We dare not try to fight the man, uh, uh, the, the principalities and the powers mm -hmm. uh, with this flesh. Right. We're going to lose every single time. Right. Uh, you know, I always say, you know, you can't box a demon. Mm -mm. Even right? Corinthians right. talk about it, we, we can be boxing the air. We can be fighting the air if you're not... If, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, if you're not focused on what you're doing, and we don't want to do that in this season. We want to remain unshakable in God. And that's only by operating in the Holy Spirit. Like I said, if Jesus himself is operating in his spirit, why do we believe that we don't have to do it? Or why do we believe that we have any type of power, authority, anointing uh, um, outside of God's spirit, mm -hmm. right? The Bible says that, you know, even before it, when Jesus had, had risen and he had been seen by many witnesses, you know, by Mary Magdalene and other witnesses. Um, it's important to understand that he says, listen, tarry ye here mm -hmm. until you be endued with power from on high, right? Our ability and our, listen, how, how does God equip us to become unshakable? It is through the spirit of God. How does God equip us to be unshakable? It is through the spirit of God. How does God equip us and hardwire us to be unshakable? Through his spirit, right? Do we remember, we remember in Acts chapter number two, that on the day of Pentecost, that the people were gathered together in one place and on one accord. And then the Holy Spirit came down. Right. Fifty days after Jesus had ascended and sitting on the right hand of the father. Hence the word Pentecost, meaning 50. 50 days from his ascension is when the spirit of God came down and they began to speak with tongues as the spirit of God gave gave them utterance. Right. And so you got to know uh, that our power, that our anointing, that our authority, anything and everything that we're going to do in God's kingdom, we cannot expect to be successful operating in our flesh. In fact, what does the what does the word teach us about the flesh and the spirit man, how they collide, how they collide? The Bible says that the uh, uh, spirit man, uh, uh, that the flesh is enmity, you know, uh, uh, towards the spirit of spirit man. Right. And, and so you got to know that unshakable people operate in the spirit. That's why we have to crucify our flesh daily. Right. Crucify your flesh so that you not crucify your flesh daily. Right. Die to your flesh daily. Right. Crucify the, 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 the flesh so that you won't walk in the lust thereof. Mm -hmm. Right. The more you crucify your flesh, the more you're built up in the spirit. Right. And so you got to know that you can only become unshakable through the operation and equipping of God's <clears throat> of God's Holy Spirit. So here we see in Luke 4, Jesus is tempted for 40 days and for 40 nights. He is literally being tempted and fighting against the devil. One of the biggest things that Christians make is that when we are fasting or that we're going to fast and we crucifying this flesh, right, so that our spiritual man can be built up. You got to know that the enemy is going to come to attack you. Let me interject right here because a lot of I, I I deal with a lot of a number of prophets and a number of intercessors, and they are always sitting. They're always in a state of a warfare a lot of the times, but they're they have not they have not connected the dots that they're fasting. 
and that they're they're experiencing the warfare. I'm not telling you to stop fasting so you can stop experiencing the warfare, but I'm 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 saying because it's a lifestyle. We're supposed to fast and pray, right? We're supposed to do that consistently. But you have to be cognizant. So I when I we had that conversation about that we can see when our children are acting crazy or when we're very sensitive, right? Um, so when you become aware of it, you're, you, you acknowledge it, you're aware that it's going on. And so you can handle it better when you are aware that it's going on. Right. And, you know, you got to understand when you're fasting that your spirit man is open, right? And, and so, you know, there is a, a, a level of, it's almost like, for lack of a, a, a descriptive words, it's almost like God, increases our sensitivity level, mm -hmm. right? Uh, our senses are heightened. Our senses are aware. We're more aware. And and not only in the natural, but in the, in the realm of the spirit, you, you know, you can sense things. You can see, you know, you're hearing. Typically when we fast, you know, we see things, visions, dreams, mm -hmm. you know, the voice of God becomes more sensitive towards us. And mm -hmm. so you got to know that why wouldn't it? Now think about the enemy. Why wouldn't the enemy try to fight, try to fight you during those moments when you're drawing yourself closer to God, right? When you're withholding food, when you're withholding uh, certain things so that for the sole purpose of getting uh, instructions from God, getting downloads from God, you know, getting revelation from God, all of those things happen. Yes. Go ahead. I was just wanted to see this part because I was, I was thinking that even in this, I don't know if this is when Luke, um, um, if Jesus said this, you know, if this bitter cup um, passes, you know, take this bitter cup for me. If not, let your will be done. That was when he was, I think that was the Garden of Gethsemane. Garden, Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. But even then, you know, you have to you have to realize the enemy does not want you to get the plans of God. Right. He does not want you to get closer to God so you can have more peace, more understanding. And so that's a, that's one of the reasons why he was trying to distract Jesus right. from the very thing that he needed to do. Absolutely. And it's interesting how the Bible, the text opens up um, and it says uh, he he uh, in, he was led by the spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those times. And at the end of them, he was hungry. Right. It is. Listen, the enemy is easier for the enemy to attack you in your flesh than it is to, for him to attack your spirit, man. Hmm. Fresh off the press of Revelation. <laughs> Let me say that again. It's easier for the enemy to attack you in your flesh than to attack your spirit man. Mm -hmm. Because your spirit man is the one, is the is the entity of God, is the part of God that is indestructible. Mm -hmm. right? right? The self-same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. Right? And so listen, he 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 wants he wants to fight you in your flesh. That's why. The scripture says that Jesus, after he fasted, he was hungry. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that the next, the very next verse, it says, uh, the, the very next verse three says, the devil said, it said to him, if you are the son of man, tell this stone to become bread. The enemy wanted to fight him in his most vulnerable state of hunger. And oftentimes, glory to God, listen, you got to be. You got to be unshakable, even in your weakest moments, even in your most your, your most challenging moments. And God it wants to speak to us even in, in, in when we don't feel it, feel it in our flesh. But you got to know that the enemy is coming to steal. He's coming to kill and he's coming to destroy. Notice the first thing that he offers him was food. I had a giggle <laughs> and I'm going to say this is a little comical tonight, but we always had. This pint-sized prophet, when we're fasting, always send us video of food. This pint-sized prophet is going to re remain anonymous. Remain anonymous. Uh, but I think it's funny that that's the first the first scripture afterwards. And then while we're fasting, it's like you always want to watch the Food Network. You always get these ideas about these new recipes. And then we're... we're you don't even think about food when you're not fasting. But then when you're fasting, that's all you think about. And you have people sending you videos of food that you want to try when you come off the fast, right? right. And then that was the first verse after. We will turn this 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 stone into bread. Like, I can only imagine the devil coming to Jesus in his most vulnerable state saying, I know you're hungry, taunting him. Mm. You know, you're the son of God. You know, why you can't listen. And, and that's how people are, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so again, you know, this, uh, so, so what does that have to do uh, with this thought process of being unshakable? Mm -hmm. Even in your most vulnerable moments, you got to maintain your spirit man and your integrity of the spirit man so that you can stay unshakable, Mm -hmm. right? There is never an excuse for you to let down your guards because the enemy doesn't play fair, right? He plays for keeps, he plays for keeps and he plays and he tries to offer you something uh, uh, that that you, you know, he will offer you something um, that is desirable to you based on, uh, you know, he's a situ- he, he's a situationalist. Mm-hmm. He's a he's an opportunist, an opportunity. right? The mm-hmm. enemy is an opportunist. So, all right. I know this brother. I've been fighting with this brother. For 40 days and for 40 nights, let me offer him some food. You know what? I know this sister struggles with alcoholism and addiction. Let me offer her something to drink and Mm -hmm. alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. You know what? I know this brother struggles with his drug addiction. Let Mm -hmm. me let me uh, uh, go uh, uh, put him in the company of all of his friends that's blazing and smoking Mm -hmm. weed today. So you got to know that the devil is an opportunity mm-hmm. and, and, and you got to maintain your spiritual muscle and your integrity of your spirit, man. Right. Because I said in order for us to move in the realm of being unshakable, we have to have the spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Right. We cannot be unshakable outside of having God's spirit. Mm-hmm. You you think about uh, uh, any patriarch in the Bible, David, he was unshakable. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I've never seen an enemy whoop up on David. Even when David sinned, even when David had to get consequences, listen, that brother has was anointed for war. Mm-hmm. He has an, an anointing to fight the Philistines. He had an anointing to take out the enemy. Listen, all of your graces, let me tell you something, all of your graces and everything that God does, it's to fight off the enemy. It's not to show how, how well you can prophesy. It's not to show how well you can, you know, move in the gifts of the spirit. None of those things matter to God. I tell you a truth. You think you should be heard because of your much speaking. Mm-hmm. I tell you a truth. You have your reward. Mm-hmm. So don't don't go and seek after vain glory and self exaltation and, and be puffed up and exalted and, and all of those things. Everything you're doing, it should bring God's name glory. Right. When you are unshakable, glory to God. Don't look at me strange as if I can prophesy outside of having God's spirit. There are different diversities of gifts, gifts, but yet it operates, uh, it's, it's manifested and operated through the self same spirit, right? So, so there are many diversities, but one spirit. That's the spirit of God. I wouldn't have any anointing. I wouldn't have the ability to be unshakable outside of having God's spirit. What do you got to say about that? I mean, I agree a hundred percent. I don't think I, I need to add anything else. It's because I, I know it sounds like we might be a little repetitive tonight, but you have to get it. You have to understand it. It has to be in the forefront of your mind that I can only be unshakable with Holy Spirit. That's it. There's no way around it. And so I don't understand how people have the audacity to believe in their finite minds that they can believe that they can fight the devil outside of having God's God's. That's power. what I yeah. And and I think some of it is is people just are not taught. And then some of it is people are taught and since they don't have a uh they don't have this you know, the Holy Spirit, they don't have a supernatural revelation, so therefore they're just kind of stuck. Like I grew up missionary Baptist. I'm not hating on this is with all due respect. This is just the truth of the matter, right? I'm a truth teller. They, we did not teach about the Holy Spirit. You heard, and God, and Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, right? And you were baptized in in the in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But you were not taught that God was three in one. You didn't. You weren't taught the importance of Holy Spirit, how He operates, speaking in tongues. I remember growing up, there was a a lady in our church who spoke in tongues, and and all the kids would crack up and laugh and point. And nobody would say, hey, she's speaking in tongues because she's full of the Holy Spirit. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? You know, that, and it made me think about the day of Pentecost. Mm-hmm. You know, the same thing happened on the day of Pentecost. People will often laugh and ridicule and And, and, and we were babies, but yeah, go ahead. No, but, but, yeah. mm-hmm. but people will often laugh and ridicule uh, uh, and judge things that they know not of, that mm-hmm. they don't really understand. Right, right. right? They were doing it ignorantly, right? Mm-hmm. And so the people uh, on the day of Pentecost, the same thing happened. These men must be full of wine. These mm-hmm. men must be drunk. Right. 
And Peter stood boldly. It's the second hour of the day. Right. Pe Peter, Peter <laughs> stood boldly drunk. and says, these men are not drunk as you mm -hmm. suppose. Mm -hmm. Right. So I believe that even in, in, in God creates environments for us to become unshakable. And then he creates disciples that become uh, mm -hmm. unshakable because there is someone who has the spirit of God. There is someone who has the knowledge and the wisdom of God and can spend time with God that understands the things of the spirit. Yeah, you just can't. We cannot get away from this. You cannot be unshakable. You cannot operate in the fullness of God without his Holy Spirit. And so if you have not been taught that, let me teach you, you cannot. You need the Holy Spirit to operate in every aspect, every part of your life. That means, and with the evidence of speaking in tongues, right? You don't have, I guess there's some debate. Do you have to have, um, do you have to, to speak in tongues to have the Holy Spirit, right? That's that's debatable. I'm not talking about that right now, but you have to, uh, to understand God in his fullness, to operate in his fullness. Why would you leave? the one third of the triune out right. and then and then expect to be healed expect to have revelation expect to prophesy i mean fully prophesy right we can hear we can hear right but you and you can say i love jesus he's my lord and savior i welcome his holy spirit without understanding the fullness of what that entails i want you to hear the teaching on tonight right and so you can you can acknowledge the holy spirit but i want you to be taught about the importance of it missionary baptist like i said did not teach the importance of it. we heard the holy ghost we didn't understand we weren't taught the importance of the holy ghost we weren't taught that the evidence of speaking in tongues is brought on by by the spirit of God, the holy fire, right? And so um, we have to teach that in his name. And you have other denominations that say you can't get into heaven without speaking in tongues. That's not the truth. And, you know, because there's a lot of people who died before the Pentecost happened, before the fire came down from heaven and they were all speaking in new tongues, right? And so we can't say that either. And so we have to just understand the importance of the tongue. We just don't speak in tongues to be, to be, to be foolish. But I believe that when we're speaking in tongues, we, we gain closer. Um, we get closer to the Lord. We get closer to the Holy Spirit. We get closer to God. We get understanding and revelation and wisdom and all those great things that we cannot get in this earthly body, right? We can get those academically. We can get those by getting skills and trades and all those things. But that, that knowledge that comes alone from the Holy Spirit, you can only get from Holy Spirit. You know, in the Bible, it was in Acts, uh, you know, uh, Acts 19, it says, he, he said unto them, he says, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since she believed? <laughs> And they said unto him, we have not as uh, uh, so much as heard whether that be an, any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that ye should Believe on him, which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. I'm going to get the messenger, uh, <laughs> um, the message translation. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Listen, you cannot prophesy. Mm -hmm. You cannot speak. You cannot declare God's word outside of having his spirit. You That's can. what we've been talking about. You cannot be unshakable, right? Uh, unless you have the spirit of God. Now, clearly here, uh, it you know, in Acts, it talks about these people had already believed. These people had already confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord, Lord and Savior. They, 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 they went through water baptism, right? Um, uh, but they've not, they had not in, in, they had not, um, um, what's the word? They didn't, they had not experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let me read the message Bible. Cause this is, this, this will break it down to you, right? It says, now it happened that while Apollos was away in Corinth, Paul made his way down through the mountains, came to Ephesus and happened on, and happened on some disciples there. The first thing he said was, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you take God into your mind only 
or did you also embrace him with your heart? Did he get inside of you? My God, right? We've never even heard of that. A Holy Spirit, God within us. How were you baptized then? Asked Paul in John's baptism. That explains it, said Paul. John preached a baptism of radical life change so that people will be ready to receive the one coming after him who turned out to be Jesus. If you've been baptized in John's baptism, you're ready now for the real thing for Jesus. Yeah, you know, and we know that, that you know. I love that. Again, we know that um, um, the, the, the ministry of John preceded Jesus Christ, you know, prepare you the way for the Lord. For there was one crying out in the wilderness, prepare you the way for the Lord. A lot uh, of us have been baptized by our pastors, right? You, yeah. you how many, just say your, your pastor's name. I've, I've experienced that baptism, mm -hmm. but I have not even heard of the Holy Spirit that God's supposed to be inside of me. The God that's supposed to make me unshakable, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I don't even, I don't even know what you're speaking about. Right. And so, so I don't know how we got on this subject, but <laughs> uh, we don't let the Lord use us, you know. And, and I think, but again, but but we've been talking about how we can't be uh, unshakable outside of being endued with power on high. Now, logistically, hear me, hear me. Logistically, God the Father is in heaven. Mm -hmm. God the Son is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Why? How do we know that? Because we see, we know that God or Jesus Christ, uh, God the God the God the Son, Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of the father interceding on behalf of the saints. Mm -hmm. Right now, Jesus told him, you know, tarry ye here in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high, which means I'm going to not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send a comforter called the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. So Holy spirit lives here on earth with us. So, right. so a part of God, the part of the tri, tri the, the God, the triune, the triune God here, uh, the spirit of God lives here with us and lives on the inside of us here on earth. And so we got to know and understand that we cannot become unshakable without having the full baptismal measure or, you know, having, having that baptismal measure that, that Paul is talking about here in, in Acts chapter 19, you know, they were baptized, uh, you know, physically, you know, John's baptism, you know, water. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and savior, you know, and then they were baptized by the water now, but again, you, we need to be baptized by the fire of God. That's what makes us unshakable. That's, <laughs> absolutely. And so, so the full measure, the full baptismal measure of who God is, you know, why, why would we want to settle like these people say, we've not even as, as much as heard of this Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. right? You, you're, you're selling yourself short if you you're are. not operating oh, in the God. fullness of what God called you to do. Oh, you miss so much. You mm -hmm. miss healing and deliverance and understanding and closeness and all those things that the comforter gives us. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. This lets us know that we prophesy through the avenue of the Holy Spirit. You cannot prophesy outside of having God's spirit. Because if you do, it's called divination. Right. <laughs> you know, there there is only one one holy source. And I think somebody said it beautifully, how they explained it, how, you know, the Bible gives us access to walk and move and navigate in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. But there are other ways to, to access the spirit realm demonically. Yes. You can, the, the spirit realm is not just for Christians. Right. And so the source of our power is only through the Holy spirit and his blood. That's right. If you're getting power, knowledge, information, through revelation, board. through another source, an through illegal, a Ouija board. An illegal source. Through tarot cards. Through somebody who's looking at the lines on your hand and reading them to you. Conjuring up of the through dead. Through a crystal ball. Whatever you want to use. 
Any of those things is divination. You're avoiding in witchcraft and you have to stop it. <laughs> There's no other way to get holy revelation, holy understanding, except through the Holy One. That's it. And so I guarantee you, you know, uh, you know, consulting deads and familiar spirits and oh, necromancy, necromancy and all of that, all of that stuff that the Bible forbids, right? It tells us all of these things. We see wizards. We see warlocks. Maybe we see uh, in the Bible how when when Moses began to raise up his staff, that he was the he was operating through the realm of the spirit and the authority and the okay. power of God, mm -hmm. right? And then the magicians and the astrologers was accessing the stars and the moons and accessing power through an illegal source. Oh, and so, and you got to know and understand, a holy God would never require us to tap in an illegal and a demonic source. Never. Never. And to give you revelation and truth, we operate in the spirit of truth. So anything outside of that is not the truth. And the spirit of error. Oh, God. So, so you got to know and understand. Listen, if you take nothing else away from this Bible study tonight, understand that we become unshakable through our operation and through the avenue of God's spirit. That is the only way we can become unshakable. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we can prophesy. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the that's the only way we can move through the gifts and the spirit of God, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, mm -hmm. prophecy, gift of faith, you the know, of discerning of spirits, and all the other ones, right? Interpretation gift of tongues, gift of healings, right? And so that's over there in uh first Corinthians 12, I believe, or 14, one of them two. So you gotta know, you gotta know and understand that I am unshakable. Somebody write that in the comments. I am unshakable because I have the power of God and I have been endued with his power from on high. Mm -hmm. God has equipped us through the avenue of his Holy Spirit to operate and move in his realm of, in, in, in legal access to operate in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so you got to know that in order to become unshakable, it is through God's spirit, not through our fleshly means. Mm -hmm. You want to pray for the people? Yeah. Let's pray for the people. Well, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We bless you. We honor you, Father. We magnify you and we lift you up, oh God. We know that there's none like you in the earth, Father. We just come, Father, humbly before you, asking you for forgiveness for everything we've done that has not been pleasing to you, oh God. We ask that you create in us a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within us, Father. Lord, put on us the mind of Christ. Let us know that we can't operate. We can't do nothing in this earth without your spirit, Father. If you, as the example in the earth, uh, had the spirit us descend upon you, Father, yes. and you operate you, Father, let us know today, Father, that we cannot move, Father. We live and we have our being in you, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the one that you left on the earth for us to operate yes, in, Father. We thank you for the mind of Christ on yes. today, Father. We thank you for the word of God on today, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, bring your people back to you, Father. Bring your people back to the bosom of God, where we can lay, Father, where we can sup, where we can get understanding and healing, Father. I come against the spirit of religion, oh God. I come against everything that is not like you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Traditions, traditions and doctrines of men, doctrines of demons, ways and things that people have said that we don't need the Holy Spirit. Father, open up your all shit. Open up your servant's eyes so he can see, oh God, so she can see, oh God, the importance of us understanding the Holy Spirit and having the Holy Spirit. Father, let us hunger and thirst after you. Let us hunger and thirst after righteousness so we can be filled on today, oh God, so we can operate operate in our calling, Father, in our assignment in the earth. Let your people know on today, oh God, that we are spirit first, Father, and that we live in the flesh secondly, Father, and that our assignments in the earth is in the spirit, oh God. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us come back to the realization of who you are, what you are, what you have called us to do, Father, and we know that you are faithful and just. We know, like you have said in Jeremiah, that you will watch over your word. You will be faithful to watch over 
over your word for us to perform it, oh God. Watch us, lead us, guide us like never before. Lord, let us walk into the spirit of truth. Father, let us shun the spirit of error, Father. Let us walk away. Let us have the boldness, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus to turn away from traditions of men, to turn away from yesteryear, to turn away from things of the old. Father, I release upon your people revelation. I release upon your people understanding. I release upon your people new eyesight, oh God, new thinking, oh God, new understanding, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, cultivate, oh God, inside of us the giftings and let us hunger, let us thirst, let us run after you, Father. Even if we're in dry places, Lord, lead us to the brook where the water is, oh God, lead us to the place where the food is, oh God. In the name of Jesus, those who are hungry, oh God, we know that you will give them food. Those who are thirsty, oh God, we know that you will give them drink, Father. Give us a yellow shit in la shata in this season like never before, Father. Your word, your spirit, your fire, oh God, your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, so we can operate, so we can work, so we can serve, so we can advance your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you right now for your people, oh God. I thank you right now that it's stirring up the giftings inside of them, oh God. The that we're stirring up the hunger inside of them, oh God. That we're stirring up, oh God, like they will be as the Bereans. They will go and research the scriptures. They will get understanding and you will give them supernatural experiences, oh God. That you will visit them in the nighttime and in the daytime. Yes, that they will know that is you, oh God. That they can say without a shadow of a doubt that it is you. That only you can do it. That only you can operate in the supernatural, oh God. And we block and we annihilate every enemy, oh God. We block and we annihilate. We send back to hell the assignments and the agenda from hell every witch and every warlock we put you on notice you will no longer operate in any area any demonic system we shut you down right now in the name of jesus we plead the blood of jesus over you in the mighty name of jesus lord we just thank you on tonight we bless you on tonight oh god we honor you all tonight father for being our lord and our savior our refuge and our friend our counselor and our doctor our lawyer and our and we thank you on today, Father, that we are getting closer to you, Father, that we won't be moved by what's going on in the earth because we know that we serve a God that's unshakable and that he's developing in the people, an unshakable people in the earth. Oh, yeah, my strength I give to you from the Lord, strength I release upon you on tonight, strength and peace and rest and rest. Revelation is your yes, portion God. of the in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you now that you're causing unshakable faith to be upon your people like no other. God, thank you for the dunamis, unshakable power, God, which is to come. In the name of Jesus, for God, I declare over your people, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after your righteousness, for they shall be filled. God, fill them afresh, God. Fill them anew. In the name of Jesus, and God, I thank you now that God, now the Spirit speaking expressly, that in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. God, I tear down every de demonic and doctrine. In the name of Jesus, God, that your people may come out of agreement with the enemy, that they may come to you, God. And I declare, even in the days to come, Father, your word declares, who shall ever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved, God. Rescue your people, even those who are being, my God, tormented by the devil, even those, Lord, that are being blinded, and God, that they are being bewitched, God, I declare that every spell be broken and cast down in the fire now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Unshakable power, unshakable faith, God. And we thank you now that you are causing your people to have a revelation like no other, God. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of a man. The things you've prepared for those, oh God, who love you. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you that the prophets are coming out of the cave. God, we thank you that your people are speaking and declaring your bold word. In Jesus' name, God, that they will speak. Hallelujah. That they will decree a thing and it shall be established in the earth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus.
Oh, Lord, give them signs. Give them wonders. Give them miracles like no other, Father, that only you can do, God. Hallelujah. In the realm of the spirit, God, your people are unshakable. Lord, I thank you now to let the people come into awareness and understand that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is power, that the flesh is weak. Hallelujah. But the spirit is willing. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you now that you will cause, God, a fresh wind to blow upon your people. These are sons and daughters in Jesus' name, God, and I thank you that we have the victory. Father, we thank you that the thing that is trying to torment them, God, in every familiar spirit, God, we tear it down now and we dismantle it. Hallelujah. Even those demonic thoughts that are tormenting the minds of your people. Let every thought come under the let every thought come under the captivity and obedience of Christ. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that our thoughts align with the word. God, that even now that our hearts be, hallelujah, that the word be hidden in our hearts, deeply rooted in our hearts, that we may not sin against you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you now, God, that you're raising up an unshakable people and we will forever give your name glory. We will forever give your name honor and we will forever give your name your due praise. It is in Jesus name we do pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the faith of God cause you to walk in your dimension of unshakable. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So listen, we're going to get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for joining, uh, hanging out with Contagious Church uh, Charlotte, where our love, where our faith, and where our worship is contagious. Contagious. Listen, we would love for you to connect with us. Um, follow, go follow our pages, Facebook page all social media outlets, and also do me a favor if you've not already done so. Go and like and follow um, Contagious Tampa so that you can stay abreast of all of the amazing things that are coming down the pipe. Fearless is this. Fearless luncheon is this Saturday. Uh, we got so many, so all many the announcements are at the beginning of the uh, So <laughs> many things that are coming down the pipe that we want you to be a part of. Mm -hmm. We want to connect with you. We want to be uh, you know, like God is saying, you know, we want to rejoice with you in the, the, the amazing things that God is doing in your life. Until next time, we love you. Let the love, faith, and worship of God always and forever remain contagious. Love you all. Have a wonderful night. night.